want to talk about this movie, Possession. It's made in 1981, and it's made by a Polish director. I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, but he's made uh, other movies that are really good, but I think a lot of people say this is his best. And uh, this Possession um, stars Sam Neill. probably know him from Jurassic Park. Um, he's in a lot of other movies. He's a really good actor. I would say that this movie was his best performance that I've ever seen. And I've also seen the movie In the Mouth of Madness. That's pretty good. And it's a horror movie with him. And uh, a comedy that was pretty recent. Um, don't remember the name of that. I'll look it up really quick. But anyway, this movie is in English, even though it has a Polish director. Th I wanted to show the artwork, and this DVD case is amazing. It's from MondoVision. I don't know if it's like a European thing or not, but it's a this is a Blu-ray, actually. Uh, the Sam Neill movies. Looking uh, that up. So I kept this plastic wrap that it came in. I thought it was really cool. I never had another... DVD or Blu-ray come with plastic wrap like that. It has pictures of scenes from the movie on the background. There are special features on this Blu-ray that I haven't watched yet. I just watched the main movie the other night, and there's a booklet in here and stuff that I haven't went through yet. But it's really nice. Uh, I didn't know that Sam Neill made an appearance on Rick and Morty. That's cool. And there's going to be another Jurassic, Jurassic World with him coming up. But, let me see, he was in Thor Ragnarok, Odin, hmm, okay, I don't know I missed that one, I guess, uh, ch -ch -ch. but I want to see, what in the world, Okay, The Hunt for the Wilder People. That's a really good movie. That might be my second favorite performance from, of his. And then I'd say In the Mouth of Madness, and then I'd say Jurassic Park is probably the last one. Even though Jurassic Park is an amazing movie, it has a lot of good actors in it. But, you know, this movie, Possession, <coughs> is really all about characters. And so you really see a performance out of him, unlike anything else that you've seen him in. I was trying to remember who uh, did the mouth of in the mouth of madness. Who uh, the director was of that? Okay, it was the John Carpenter movie. So it was the one the guy who did Halloween made in the mouth of madness, and that's a really good movie too. It's about a book writer and like the the book that he's writing comes to life or something like that. I don't know, but it's a horror movie. It's good. It's a lot different than this and. This is like a surreal movie, the kind of movies that I love. I knew that I was going to like this going into it because it came across in a lot of lists of movies, um, surreal movies. You know, David Lynch is my favorite director. He's very different, and these movies are hard to categorize. Uh, some people categorize this as horror because there are horror elements, but there's also a lot of drama, and um, it's just hard to place into any specific categories. You know, these are the kind of movies that I love that you want to give, like, multiple viewings because there's a lot of hidden stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff that's not so clear, you know, what you're seeing, what's going on, and it gives you stuff to contemplate and to talk about, discuss about with other people who love the movie. And so, you know, there's, like, a woman on here with, like, hair and tentacles and in her breasts, and there's a little bit of nudity of the, the main female actress on here, you know, her top is off in some scenes, but not a lot, and there's not a lot of sexual stuff. There is some blood, um, there's some a lot of disturbing scenes, but I'm going to take this out of the plastic and show you what else is really cool about this. So you see this is like a case, and then there's a slip here that's kind of like attached to it with the, the name of the movie. There's other stuff under there, but you see like this bookmark thing here sticking out, and so you pull on this and it pulls out the case for the Blu-ray, and what you 
see there's that woman's face. It's kind of creepy. That's actually like the ending scene of the movie. So I, I love that how that comes out. There's stuff on the back of it too. That's the main. That's Sam Neill and then the main actress. So, and this is kind of like her doppelganger. So here's the inside of there. It's got the chapters and stuff. It's got more. Uh, pictures in the background, different scenes. This is kind of like the ending scene, the stairwell, and uh, there's a booklet in here. Pictures and stuff too. I haven't really took the time to look through that yet, but I will. I'm sure I'll be watching this movie multiple times and showing other people who are interested in movies like this. I love the case, and this isn't even a Criterion movie, and I love the Criterion collection. I wonder if they have a possession you know, it'd be surprising if they didn't have possession in the Criterion Collection, but I haven't seen it, so. But this might be one of the coolest cases that I, that I have. And I've got some pretty awesome ones, some steel books and different Criterion Collection books. Uh, you know, I should look through the booklet and see if there's any pictures that can describe anything. So there's going to be spoilers, and I'm just going to kind of talk about the movie, what happens, and what I think about it. And so I had this for a little bit and haven't gotten around to watch it until the other night, which I think was great. You know, I stayed it for a good time. I moved into a new apartment, and so this is pretty interesting. There's some stuff about theology in here, and it kind of talks about some different themes of the movie. There's a picture of Christ on the cross that's, you know, a part in the movie, too, and uh, there it says God and the devil right there. So this is interesting, what's, what's in here, I'll have to go through this another time. Basically, you know, there's another picture of the main female lead, I don't know her name, but basically it's about a breakup, and uh, I think that their girlfriend and boyfriend, I don't know if they're married, but they have a son, and you know, at the very beginning of the movie, you, you see they're kind of going through this breakup, and they don't exactly know why, uh, but, you know, they're just not in love like they used to be or whatever, or the wife isn't really, and there's a scene pretty close to the beginning where they're, you know, she wants to leave, and she... They meet up in a restaurant, and they're, like, not facing each other. They're sitting right next to each other, and they're discussing things. Like, he's asking, you know, how are we going to go on with our son? You know, what's what's going to happen? How are we going to do this and everything? And he basically says, like, he doesn't want to see the son at all. Like, he'll give her money every month. He's not going to be in the son's life. And she's like, well, how could you do that? And he's like, well, how could you do that? How could you, you know, he found out that she'd been seeing another man. So they get into this argument at the restaurant and it really escalates like they're just screaming yelling at each other and it gets to where you know she she goes away and he's following her and he starts tossing chairs and tables and stuff and <laughs> it just gets really nuts and it's like whoa uh and and there's like four or five like people from the restaurant that come in and like tackle him and hold him down <laughs> um so you see a lot of scenes like this, really intense scenes with a lot of emotion, and that's why I really said that, you know, this is my favorite movie of Sam Neill, because you see a different side of him. He's also very young in this movie, so, you know, he looks a little different. It's the same Sam Neill, but a lot younger, and so there's another scene where... The one that one that spoke to me a lot was their when they're arguing arguing and fighting in their in their apartment or wherever they they're living and they're chasing each other screaming and it's escalating again and it escalates to the point to where she slaps him and then it kind of slows down and you see him kind of stare at each other and uh, you know he's like do it again and she gives like this smile on her face, you know, she slowly smiles, <laughs> it's like, oh man, it gets really intense, and it's so over the top, but yet, and it's so extreme, and it's frightening at the same time, like the music that's playing and just the mood of the whole scene, 
and but it's like it's realistic too because like I've seen stuff like this I've lived through it I've been through it myself and I'm like you know <laughs> as crazy as this is it's also like real um, there's a lot of disorienting like camera work like the camera spins around and stuff it does a lot of close-ups on their faces and stuff and you know after she slaps him he says do it again you know it gets to the point where he ends up slapping her and she's like uh, He's like, this is for the lies, and she's like, well, you'll have to do a lot more than that, and, you know, so he slaps her some more, and then she runs out of the apartment, like, into the street, and he's chasing her, and, you know, he says, like, he'll follow her or something like that, he'll keep following her, and she turns around and looks at him, and, like, blood's, like, coming out of her mouth, and she's like, no, you won't, or something, I don't know, but she kind of runs in front of this truck that's like has like car like crushed cars on the top of it and it like turns over it it pulls you know it swerves out, out of the way to not hit her and then like these crushed cars like fall off of it so it's like it causes kind of this little disaster there it's just it's just insane but so like I said a lot of the beginning of it's about their relationship and their breakup and all their fights and stuff and, uh, so he finds out that she's been sleeping with this other guy, and he gets, you know, with this other guy, he ends up meeting this other guy. There's so much that I'm going to skip out on and skip around on, but I'm just trying to hit some important points to me. So, I guess he, he goes, he ends up going to this other guy, and he finds out that, uh, she hasn't been with this other guy for a while either and he doesn't really know where she is and you know he's really mad at this other guy that she's been sleeping with and the other guy's like trying to calm down the situation he's like we don't have to you know hate each other and stuff like <clears throat> we're adults like we should get along or whatever and but Sam Neill tries to fight him, he tries to, he throws a punch at him, the other guy dodges, and, you know, returns the physicality, and so he kind of kicks the crap out of Sam Neill, and he gets out of there. Anyway, you know, she comes back to the house, the apartment, or whatever, every now and then with Sam Neill because of her son. She keeps showing up, and so he knows, like, she's not been seeing the other guy, and so he's curious, like, where she's been. He ends up hiring a private investigator to find out, and this private investigator follows her, like, to this other apartment, and, you know, this other apartment's kind of run down, it's like a big open, big open rooms, but it's kind of run down, and it's kind of different, you know, they're in Europe, or, I don't know where it's really filmed at, I don't remember, um, if it's in Greece or what, I guess it's during the Cold War time. And I guess the director was inspired for this movie because, or, you know, it's kind of made after his own breakup, and he made a movie that got banned in Poland or something, and so he got kicked out. And so this movie has to do with his feelings of his breakup and being kicked out of his country and and all these different things combined into this movie. But the movie gets even more bizarre because find out when the private investigator finds her in this apartment. He ends up going in, going through the rooms, and he goes to the room, and he sees, like, this slimy, slithery creature with, like, tentacles, and he's, like, horrified, like, what's, what is that? And, uh, she freaks out and ends up killing this dude for, like, seeing, you know, what he wasn't supposed to see or whatever. So now, you know, she's committed a murder, and you know, the movie is completely whacked out now because there's, like, monsters and stuff. We don't know what's going on. But they, uh... So there ends up being some series of other people coming to the apartment, and kind of the same thing happens. They end up discovering, you know, the monster, and they get killed. Um, I guess the uh, private investigator that got killed was the gay guy. And so, like, his husband or boyfriend or whatever goes to find to find out what happened to him because he never came home. So he, uh, you know, he asks Sam Neill about sending him out to find this woman's location, and he gets the location. So he goes there, 
and he ends up seeing the creature and uh, freaks out, and she ends up like beating him with like milk, like she has like a glass of milk or something, and she's like beating him with it, and it's going all over the wall, and then she like takes his gun from him and shoots him like three times and kills him. Uh, it ends up being to where the guy that she cheated with ends up going after her because he hasn't seen her for a while he's wondering what's going on with her and so he wants her address and so he goes there and he sees the creature and there's a creepy scene there because like the creature is like changing or growing and it like there's a scene where it like raises up its face it's like what is this really tall like head it's weird slimy and it's in like a dark corner and it raises up, but you see these, like, weird eyes on the side of it and its mouth, and he becomes, like, instantly blinded when he sees it, and he freaks out, and it's really cool. I watch, there's some YouTube videos where people explain it, and, you know, they talk about how it has to do with so much with religion and all these correlations with the Bible and stuff, and, uh, like, when he was blinded, it was kind of like the Apostle Paul being blinded, um, but this creature, you know, is not... God, it's not, you know, it's not even, like, holy, it's like an evil creature because, you know, she's committing acts of murder and stuff to, to protect it or whatever. It's, it's really, really crazy, but there's a scene where, you know, one of the most popular scene, one of the most famous scenes of this movie is the subway scene, and that's when the f main female, you know, she's back of the house with Sam Neill or whatever and she's telling him stories about like this inner struggle within her between faith and chance and she's like it's like it's like two sisters you know one's faith and one's chance and they're fighting and um, I'm just waiting until like one of them dies or whatever one kills the other one and, and then you know they take over and so there's a lot of weird crazy dialogue in this movie but after that, it shows a scene where, you know, she's looking up at this Jesus statue this on the cross that I showed you the picture on the back there. And she's making kind of whimpering noises, holding on to this grocery stack, sack. Like, um, she's kind of marveled by, you know, the faith. But she's kind of having this struggle that's kind of pulling her away from it. Something like that. But she, she leaves, you know, the church, and she goes down into the subway. And as she's going through this dark subway by herself, going through those dark hallways, she really starts to freak out. She starts laughing hysterically, and uh, she starts convulsing and stuff, basically, for this long scene. It goes on for a while. And she's just shouting and screaming, and, you know, it's just, it's kind of like she's having that inner struggle. We're seeing that. Uh, like physically happening on the outside, like manifesting itself, like her inner struggles manifesting itself outwardly. And um, like I said, she's laughing and stuff at first, then she screams, and she's kind of she's like stumbling up against the wall in the hallway in the in the subway, and she has this bag of groceries, and she's like hitting it up against her, and she's just hysterical, making these noises, making these crazy movements, and yeah, eventually she snaps and it's like one side wins or whatever and she just starts really going into these crazy movements and ah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know she's just like twisting and going nuts and she's like smashes the bag of groceries up against the wall and like milk goes everywhere and she like falls on the ground and she's flailing around and rolling around and the the, the hallway is like damp and it's got the milk and everything and she's just wigging out man. <laughs> and then She's kind of like down on her knees for a while and she's like, uh, and like milk and stuff starts coming out of her mouth and it's like milk and blood and it's like coming out from like over her shoulders, like through her hair too, like down her chest, down into like a puddle on the ground. She's like, uh, it's like, it's a miscarriage scene, like she's not given a miscarriage, but like that's how she explains it. She says it's like a miscarriage, like, like, like there's like the inner struggle of faith and chance and, and one of them and they're fighting each other, and one of them won, and uh, she said that Faith died, she said it was like Chance killed Faith, and then so like that miscarriage scene was like pushing like what was left of Faith out of her, or whatever, but then she says like, 
somehow she still has faith that she, you know, she has to protect what, what she has left, so, uh, you know, those weird stuff, but yeah, that scene's definitely nuts, uh, <laughs> it's awesome, it's crazy, uh, and it's just her, I mean, it's just her just doing movements and noises, and it's one of the craziest performances I've ever seen, and it's, it's terrifying, it's weird, it's, something you won't forget if you watch this movie, but there's so many scenes, like, with the monster and stuff, <sighs> so, after her, the guy that she cheated with goes to see the monster, she, she ends up stabbing him, and, uh, you know, he's supposed to be one that kind of has religion, because when he talks to Sam Neill, when he says, you know, he goes to Sam, he wonders where she's been, and, one of the dialogue exchanges between them, this guy says, uh, Sam said something about fear, I don't remember, but this guy said the only, the only, uh, thing you should fear is God, whatever that means to you, and then Sam Neill says, to me, God is a disease, and this other guy says, that's why through the disease we must find God, <laughs> so, you hear stuff like that, it's like, what, like, that's what I love about the movie, because there's different interpretations of what all this stuff means. But during that scene, the guy that she cheated with, he's all flailing around, too. Like, as he's talking, he's, like, rolling around. And that, that's something that I just remembered that I forgot, too, at the beginning of the movie, when they're breaking up and stuff, and she finally leaves him. There's a scene where N Sam Neill is in, like, a hotel room for, like, three weeks or something, and he's been drinking the whole time, and he has, like, this, you know, a beard growing in and stuff. He's all dirty. He's in bed, and he's like, ugh, ugh. He's like... He gets on the phone and he can't talk. He's like, mmm, mmm. Like, he's going through, like, a heroin withdrawal is what it's like. And, uh, and it's like, yeah, breakups can be pretty bad. They could actually do that to somebody. Like, you know, again, it's kind of extreme, but it's kind of realistic. It's like, man, they could really mess you up, you know, especially if you had a kid together and stuff and been together for a long time. But there's so many good scenes in this movie. So... When that guy that she cheated with sees the monster and he goes blind or whatever, he follows her, she opens the refrigerator and you see, like, the head and feet of, like, one of the other people that she killed, um, in the refrigerator, and he's, uh, she takes a knife and she kind of, like, pokes him in the chest, and she's like, you're no better than, like, anybody else or whatever, like, in the end, we're all just meat, like, we're all just insects. And she, like, stabs him with a knife, so he bleeds a lot, but it doesn't kill him. He gets terrified. He runs out of the apartment, and, uh, he calls Sam Neill's character, and, uh, he tells him that Sam Neill's character is kind of laughing about it because, you know, he hates this guy, and he's like, well, go to the bar and wait there for me and bleed, and, and I'll come see you, and he's like, and just bleed a little while, or whatever, so... He goes over there, and he he, uh <clears throat> he goes to the apartment, and she's not there, and he sees the monster, and it changes him somehow. He kind of has a little freak-out moment himself, and then he, I think he sees the body in the refrigerator, he ends up turning all the gas on in the house and stuff, like he's going to blow it up. He goes to the bar where that guy is, and they have a conversation in the bathroom. And the guy who got stabbed said, he's like, you know, the, I saw the monster. It was, like, horrible. It's, like, it's evil. And Sam had a different interpretation of it or view, and he's like, it was divine. And Anyway, Sam ends up killing that guy. Um, he gets, like, a shoe, he shoves it in the toilet, and then he knocks the guy out with, like, a porcelain top or whatever, and he puts his head into the toilet and flushes it. So he kills him, he goes back to the apartment, and he sets this hot coil thing, like, on a book of matches or whatever, and ends up setting it off, and he runs out of there, and it blows up the whole apartment. Uh, he ends up 
getting back with the woman. I don't remember all the details about everything here, but anyway, you know, she basically says like the monster is like God to her or whatever, that she has God inside of her, and there's a scene where she's like having sex with the monster. It's like wrapped around her and it's, you know, it's, it's grown and changed and he's watching this happen and, uh, it's, uh, that's a weird scene for sure. <sighs> it reminds me a lot of like David Cronenberg's stuff too and like Naked Lunch. There was some weird stuff in there. But, Sam Neill ends up going crazy after watching this. He ends up killing, like, a police officer. He's on a motorcycle, and he gets in a wreck. And he kind of has his own little freak-out moment. Anyway, at the end of the movie, he's cl climbing up the stairway. And he's, like, almost dead from this motorcycle wreck. He's, like, bleeding everywhere, and, like, his arm's broken and stuff. But he's climbing up this t tall, curly staircase, and he gets up to the top, and she ends up coming in and following him, and she's like, I wanted you to show, show, I wanted to show you, like, the monster or whatever, or, like, what it's become, and it's him, and, uh, so it's like a doppelganger of him, <laughs> and... Then, like, a bunch of police come in, and they kill Sam Neill and the woman, and they don't kill him all the way. Well, they, they sh look full, fill her full of bullet holes. She has a gun, and she ends up, like, killing herself on top of Sam. And they kind of have, like, a final scene where they kiss or whatever, and uh, the guy who is, like, the new Sam Neill, the new monster creation, he walks up to a woman and has him finish him off with the gun and he, he escapes. Well the whole time their son was being watched by this teacher and I completely didn't talk about this but the teacher is like the woman's doppelganger. She looks exactly like the female lead. She is the female lead just dressed different different hair and when Sam Neill first meets her like after the breakup he goes to the 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 boy, he takes the boy to school, and the teacher's there, and he's like, what is this, a joke? Like, what is this wig? And he grabs her hair, and he finds out it's real, and he's like, oh. He's like, have you seen my wife? And she's like, yeah, I see her, like, every day when she drops the sun off or whatever. And he's like, that's weird. Like, you know, she's, like, exactly the same. <laughs> so at the end of the movie, the kid is staying with this female doppelganger and she's pretty much like a good she exhibits a lot of good traits um, cause she comes and helps Sam for a while watching the sun and everything well like the new Sam the evil monster thing that turned into Sam is knocking on the door and their son's like don't open the door don't open the door and she's like but I want to and the kid runs up to the bathtub, and he's in the bathtub through various scenes in the movie, but this final scene, he runs up to the bathroom tub and basically, like, lays in it and drowns himself. You know, he's like, don't open the door, she's going to anyway. In the end of the movie, you see her face, the doppelganger's face, like, in front of the door with Sam Neill behind the door. It's like a glass door or whatever, you can see him behind it. And it zooms up on her face, and she has, like, green eyes. And he had green eyes. And that's kind of how it ends. So, there's also a lot of scenes, like when they're fighting, there's a scene where there's this electric knife, and the main female lead, like, ends up, they're arguing, and it escalates, like so many scenes do, and she has this electric knife that, like, puts it right to her neck, like, ah, and she, like, slices her neck. They go into the bathroom, and he's like, he bandages it up, and he's like, we can be like we used to, like, I'll do everything you want to, and, and, uh, she doesn't want to have anything to do with him. He goes back into the kitchen, he's sitting down, and he's taking, like, the electric knife, just going, Rah, like, to different parts of his arm, like, Rah, just, just cutting parts of his arm, and she's like, y you don't feel anything, and he's like, no. 
there's a scene where she's going nuts and like grabbing a bunch of clothes or her son's clothes or whatever and she opens the refrigerator she shoves the clothes in the refrigerator and then she opens like the cupboards with all the canned goods and stuff and she's like gathering them up in her arms and then just like dropping them on the floor and they're just like falling <laughs> like the whole house is like a mess there's like books and papers and crap everywhere and it's just like chaotic like it's insanity so it's like they're just tearing each other apart they're and so when you think of possession and you think of like a horror movie you think of like a demonic possession and that could be parts of this movie like she acts possessed like in the subway scene but it also has to do do you know, people, a lot of people say there's, like, a dual meaning to this, because, like, Sam Neill wants to possess her, like, as his wife, like, he doesn't want her to leave, and stuff like that, um, and it's pretty cool, uh, one of the guys who tried to explain the movie said this monster kind of represents maybe, like, an antichrist that's kind of, like, the embodiment of evil, or something like that, um, but, you know, this movie just needs to be watched a lot, <laughs> All I can say is that I really liked it. There's some really strong performances. Like, the female lead is amazing. Sam Neill's amazing. Like, she's probably the most amazing part. And, like, she's really beautiful. And she's really, like, terrifying at the same time. And it's just, it's crazy. Like, it's nuts. kind of reminds me of, like, The Shining, how, you know, the female lead in that movie is really great, where, you know, she's just kind of like a victim, like, going through the insanity, going through the hell, and you kind of, that kind of resonates with you, and in this, it's like, she's going through the hell, but she's also, like, part of the hell, and, uh, I think uh, this possession, the woman in this, is probably a stronger performance than the one the woman in Shining. I mean, I was not disappointed with this movie at all, and what got me to want to watch this movie was I started looking up reviews on YouTube and everybody, this, the way that people were describing it, I was like, man, I've got to see this now. So I finally watched it, and afterwards I went and watched more reviews and explanations, and that's why I love movies like this. Like, I probably might do it tonight. I might watch more, you know, people's ideas about what all this means. But I would definitely suggest this if you're into weird, crazy, creepy movies. Uh, just really good movies. I mean, so it's a big blessing for me to have this. I definitely put it up there with David Lynch's movies. You know, I, it makes me want to see more of this director's movies. I think that I heard that maybe this was his only one that's in English, which isn't really a big deal to me, but, you know, a lot of people will probably prefer <coughs> not to read subtitles the whole time, but... <sighs> so, great movie, great packaging. I don't know what else to say, really. It's just filled with memorable scenes that will stick with you, that will make you think about stuff. And it was made in 1981. It's not really, you know, extremely old, but so much better than the movies I see today. It's a wild ride, guys. So, definitely give it... 10 out of 10. I don't have any complaints on that one. So, that's about it, guys. God bless. Thanks for watching.